For many men, it can be hard to know exactly what role we can or should play in working towards an end to sexism. Well, to me, it's not that hard. I mean, we can start by giving proper investigations for accusations of rape, you know, so people aren't falsely put in prison based on something they didn't do. Oh, that's right, those situations don't exist, according to feminists. If only I had something I could show that would prove it does happen. Scott Espinosa was facing 35 years in prison. He was convicted of six felonies, including rape by force and pimping. Police said the victim was 14 years old, but she wasn't. Where the prosecutor even asked her about these 10 men, and she said, oh, well, yeah, that, that never happened. And it turns out the victim is not 14, but at least 22 years old at the time. Teresa Peterson said her daughter is a longtime drug user, prostitute, and liar. Thinking about it now, it just breaks my heart. That's my daughter. She knew what her daughter's accusations had done to Espinosa's life. Still, the jury found Espinosa guilty. I was in jail for 589 days, I believe. Like almost 19 months. So, Kristen, if other people and Team 10 couldn't find out all of this stuff, why couldn't police? Atika, police did find all the same things that we found. They brought that information to the prosecutor, but the prosecutor took the case to trial anyway. Oh, I guess I did have something. Okay, well, yeah, I'd say not assuming men are always guilty in cases of rape accusations would be a good start, but I think ultimately we should do our best to treat everyone with the same equal respect, not giving favoritism to either gender. I wonder if this guy in the first video has the same solutions. In this video, we will explore answers to those questions and share a few suggestions about how men can respectfully approach feminism. Ah, crap, not another white knight. And, critically, explain why it's beneficial for men to be involved. Wait a minute, why does this guy look so familiar? Is this... Oh, fuck, it is. It's, it's John McIntosh. He's the one who's the puppet master behind Anita Sarkeesian. I am no one's puppet, you sexist pig. You're right, Anita. I know you're not a puppet. Just go back to your Woolcrafted video, Cups Are Sexist. We both know you did that all on your own. So I guess I kind of have to get into what this Macintosh guy has to say. I'm sure it'll be something like patriarchy. And that word is patriarchy. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Lightning. Huh, didn't think it'd be that literal. Well, you heard one feminist speak, you've heard them all, I guess, right? Because there's so much misinformation about feminism floating around out there in the cultural ether, it's useful to quickly define what that term actually means. Okay, so maybe I got some bad information about what feminism is. Feminism is a socio-political movement with the central goal of ending sexism and dismantling gender-based oppression. So contrary to common misconceptions, feminism is not about man-hating or female supremacy. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself. You're fucking scum. You are fucking scum. Fucking brave apologist, incest supporting, woman hating, fucking scum. I just want to listen to someone else's opinion. I'm not even on a side here. I just listen to as many people as I can. You know what though? Why would you pay money to fucking support a fucking brave apologist if you weren't fucking one? It's a white fucking privilege, racist fucking male that doesn't stand for women's rights. Not about man hating, huh, John? You can talk about your textbook definitions all you want, but the fact is, it does not matter what you think feminism is. It doesn't matter what your little group of people thinks feminism is. All that matters is the people who identify with your cause. And you will be identified by the most extreme people who associate with you. There are people who say that all men should be sterilized and need permission to procreate. You don't believe these are real people. Just watch this. Men get vasectomies and then their sperm is actually taken, taken away from them. Yes, that's right. And if they pass that test, then they're allowed to have their sperm and procreate. You know, I really wish that woman was a troll, but I don't think she is based on the previous videos she's done. So on top of feminists wanting to sterilize men, we have the people supporting the kill all men hashtag. You can go around and say, oh, well, those aren't real feminists. Bullshit. You see... People will jump on a movement for their own gain, and those people are typically the most vocal. But you know what? I can sit here and list off all these examples of feminists doing horrible things. I know you'll just brush it off as, oh, well, they aren't real feminists. My brand of feminism is only real feminism. So you know what? We still haven't gotten to your five ways to end sexism. Let's just, let's see number one. Let's see if it has any value. The feminist endeavor. All right, well, I, I guess he talks a little bit here, so let's just skip to number one. Let's fast forward. All right, just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, this should be good. And 
actively calling for men's participation in working towards ending sexism. For fuck's sake, Macintosh, can you just get the fucking point? We are taught early on that boys don't cry. Oh, shut the fuck up already. Come on, just get to the fucking point. I just have to fast forward even faster this time. Finally, number one. All right. Okay, so if we're on board with ending sexism, what specifically can we do as men to be helpful? Here's our quick list of five tips for respectfully engaging with feminism as men. Listen to women. I'm reading, <laughs> fuck face. Now that might seem really obvious, but far too often men have a hard time just listening to what women have to say. Okay, and it then is maybe you can want so to hard. listen and understand what we're actually about. Rape culture is part of patriarchy. 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 I don't know if you're noticing a the theme. Patriarchy. You know, John, we can listen to them all day, but the fact is they're saying the same shit over and over and over. It's this fictional thing called the patriarchy. Woo, big deal, yeah. It's a fictional entity that they can just blame all their problems on it, and that's not really how things should be. And respecting women's knowledge and experiences. Because of the way we're socialized to think of our voices as most important, men have a tendency to interrupt and interject ourselves into conversations. That's such a sexist thing to say that we interrupt people. Oh, did I just interrupt him? Touché, Macintosh, touché. But no, in all seriousness, I've dealt with women who constantly interrupt people. I wouldn't say it's a male-dominated trait. I mean, maybe if we went back into the 1950s, but today women are just as likely to interrupt a man as a man is to interrupt a woman. So that statement about men feeling their opinion is more important is ridiculous. Everyone thinks their opinion is the most important. Ever hear opinions are like assholes? Everyone has one, and usually they stink? And then to dominate those interactions. This behavior is so ingrained that men often don't even realize we're doing it. You know, you used to think this Macintosh guy was the puppet master, but I think he's actually the puppet. I'm no puppet. I'm a real boy, and I have opinions of my own. I'm not just a puppet for Anita Sarkeesian. Anita is great. I love Anita. She is such a wonderful, amazing woman, but I feel this in such a plutonic way because I do not sexualize her for her body. I am not a puppet. Which is why it's critical to learn how to take a step back, to try not to interrupt, and instead actively listen and absorb what is being said before responding. I mean, you should do that with anyone you're having a conversation with. I think that's just kind of polite. Uh, so I don't see what this has to do with sexism or women or anything. It's just common courtesy, you know? Now, of course, this does not mean you have to agree with everything every individual woman says. No one person's perspective can ever represent all of feminism or the experiences of all women. Wait a minute, isn't he the guy that just said the correct definition of feminism? And now we say no one person's perspective can represent all feminism? I mean, I agree that no one person can fully represent an ideology, but that's fucking hypocritical. It simply means that we, as men, are not in a position to define feminism for women. You just defined it, you fucking moron! Because there's so much misinformation about feminism floating around out there in the cultural ether, it's useful to quickly define what that term actually means. Feminism is a socio-political movement with a central goal of ending sexism and dismantling gender-based oppression. It simply means that we, as men, are not in a position to define feminism for women, and that we should actively pay attention to women's voices, because for so long, women's experiences, women's perspectives, and women's ideas have been dismissed, ignored, and silenced. Seriously, are you from 2015, or did you grow up in, like, the 50s and get transported to 2015? I mean, that would explain where you got that shitty haircut, but I digress. Because the way I see it, women are treated with much more respect than men. I'll give you a personal example. I was in second grade and was playing on the swings all by myself when the recess monitor came over to me and said, so-and-so said that you hit her. The little girl was giggling behind her with her friends, and they all say, I hit her. I was on the swings the entire time, yet the monitor, of course, believes the little innocent girls. Stuff like that is happening more and more these days. There's an overcorrection where a woman's statement is treated as fact. And yes, sometimes it is factual. But whatever happened to innocent before proven guilty? Back to what I was talking about before. Someone was put in fucking jail for over a year because some woman made up a story. It's especially vital to listen to women of color, particularly black and indigenous women. I'm sorry I keep freezing on his face, but he just keeps saying such stupid things. 
Anyways, so we're talking about equality, yet we have to make all these special exceptions for whether you have a penis, whether you have a different skin tone, whether your family lived here before Britain came and stole all the land. For fuck's sake! How about you treat everyone the same and not make favoritism towards anyone? Don't you see how condescending you are? Oh, well, these people need these magic protections to be on a level playing field to everyone else. That's the most racist, sexist attitude you can fucking have. Ah. Because as fe I'm sorry, I'm just skipping to the next one. This is ridiculous. It's important for us as men to acknowledge that when we talk about feminism, we follow the lead of women. Feminism, it's for men too, just as long as you listen to what women tell you to do. Yet while feminist ideas do originate with women, that does not mean that it's the responsibility of every woman to teach all men about sexism. So in what ways are you repressed? Like, oh my god, you shouldn't ask me that. It's just obvious. Women are so repressed, I shouldn't have to educate you on how the world is. So we shouldn't go around interrogating or demanding answers from women. Instead, we should be proactive in doing the work ourselves by committing to continuous lifelong learning. So John, what do you do when you have some angry feminists yelling at you and you know what they're saying is factually wrong? Are you just supposed to go, well, you know, you're women and you know better than I do about women problems. But as a guy, you can still observe these problems and it doesn't stop you from seeing them. Sometimes getting an outside perspective is actually better than being too close to it. Lucky for us, over the past century, feminist scholars have written volumes on the topic. So here are some suggested readings about feminism and how patriarchy operates as a social system. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you read through that whole fucking list of books. It's just fucking ridiculous. The place where men can be most helpful in regards to feminism is first within ourselves and then amongst other men. Say guys, did you know that feminism is out there to stop sexism against men too? Really? How? Uh, don't ask questions. Patriarchy encourages men to buy into sexist thinking and at the very least remain complacent in sexism through our silence. You know, guys, I would treat women with respect, but at that super secret patriarchy meeting, they said we have to hold women down because they're just so much better than us. Anyways, I'm off to my Illuminati meeting. Have fun, guys. So instead, step off the path of least resistance and dare to make yourself and other men uncomfortable about sexism. Make men uncomfortable about sexism, huh? Okay, so I'll go up to some guys and they'll be like, you know, men are responsible for all the world's problems. I only wish I wasn't cursed with this horrible appendage. Yeah, I'm sure that would work and make some men uncomfortable. Or I can go the other way, you know. Say, guys, do you know what makes a woman good? Nothing, because they're pieces of shit who just need to make me a fucking sandwich. You know, contrary to what a lot of feminists may think, that would actually certainly offend a lot of guys. Wow, Mr. McIntosh finally told me to do something that actually sounds fun. Awesome. Let the other men around you know that their sexist behavior is not okay. Motherfucker. Okay, I guess he wanted us to make him uncomfortable by just being bitchy at them. Whoops. For example, when you stand up and say that a sexist joke is not funny... Now guys, that joke is not funny. You know what's going to happen if you do that? Uh, you're going to either get punched in the face or they're just going to make fun of you back and you're going to be teased and tormented for the rest of the time you know them. So, eh, I, I, I really don't think you should do that. But, if you're John McIntosh, I think you should because uh, I think that'd be funny to see him get punched in the face, don't you? The men telling that joke can no longer be assured that they will go unchallenged the next time they tell it. In other words, those men can no longer count on other men to accept or go along with their sexism. Now, Mr. McIntosh, I'm going to give you a little psychology 101. You see, when one person in a group goes against a large group of people, they are labeled as an outsider. You have to get the entire group to feel that it's sexist or whatever, because that's mob mentality. Interrupting the sexist status quo is a simple yet powerful way that all men can make a difference. Nope, you're a fucking moron. Congratulations. If you make a comment and a woman dismisses or disagrees with you, don't take it personally. Oh, that's right. I forgot men's opinions don't matter to women, so they can just dismiss it and be rude, and you don't have to take it personally? Awesome. Wow, I love feminism. She doesn't owe you anything, and her disagreement does not necessarily mean that she's angry or frustrated with you as an individual. Uh, if only you heard some of the feminists I've argued with. That being said, it's completely understandable for women to express anger about sexism. 
Yes, it's understandable, but just because I understand it, that doesn't mean it is in any way justified. See, I understand that they have this fabricated idea in their head of what sexism is, much like how conspiracy theorists think 9-11 was an inside job, or how there is an Illuminati who puts the secret hand gesture in all the media, or that someone believes some guy was able to walk on top of water. All these stories are manufactured, and when you go against the image in their head, they get angry. So, yes, I completely understand why they get mad, but that doesn't make it justified in any way. Sexism should make everyone angry. After all, most women have some first-hand experience with violence or harassment or mistreatment at the hands of men. And most women have been mistreated by other women. And most guys have some experience dealing with some woman or some man who has mistreated them in some way. That's life, John. What can I say? But you making vague statements like that is absurd. Everything you said applies to the vast majority of people. Sometimes even men who claim to be allies. So don't get defensive if individual women don't want to engage with you. You know what, since you're just going to keep repeating yourself, maybe I should too. Feminism. It's for men too, just as long as you listen to what women tell you to do. And remember that it's definitely not our job to police the ways that women may choose to speak about sexism or their experiences. You're fucking scum. You are fucking scum. Fucking rape apologist, incest supporting, woman hating, fucking scum. That's right, just listen and believe. Men's support for feminism should not be seen as some kind of favor to women. As we've discussed, dismantling the system of sexist beliefs benefits people of all genders. You know, that's a nice idea and everything, but I just don't see the measures that they want to take and how that's actually going to happen, because it seems very one-sided and just towards women, and they ignore any issues that are against men. And moreover, men shouldn't expect a reward for deciding not to participate in a terrible system of oppression. You know, I think not participating in feminism is its own reward. Or, as many feminists have said before, you don't get a cookie for being a decent human being. Aw, but I like cookies. It's really hard to break years of socialization overnight, so messing up is inevitable. I have certainly made my fair share of mistakes. Hey, uh, Mercedes, don't you think that it was kind of sexist of him to block you off of Twitter? It was, it was not only sexist, it was also racist. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The key is what you do next. We always have a choice in how we respond to our mistakes. Well, John, let's see how you respond to that one. <laughs> is, that, was that, is that weird? Is that not something people do? So be humble, examine your own actions, acknowledge failings, and continue to learn how to be better and more supportive. Hello, Pot. My name is Kettle. Did you know that you're black? Sexism is not necessarily something always done consciously. And the same thing goes for being condescending, but, you know, you seem to be a master at that. It's something we're socialized to think is normal. And as such, it's something we often participate in without even meaning to. This is why challenging ourselves and reflecting on our own actions is a vital step in the process. But remember to be compassionate and patient with yourself and keep working at it. That's right, man. You either believe feminism or there's something wrong with you. This is by no means an exhaustive list of advice. You mean there's more? Fuck. I'm already exhausted just saying some of the things wrong with your five tips. But it should give you a place to start. Now, if you're feeling a little uneasy at this point, that might actually be a good sign. So it's good I feel sick to my stomach that people like you are respected by the United Nations? As men, the process of honestly re-examining our own assumptions and questioning our participation in sexism will often feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I do question my role in sexism because it's people like you who make everything about gender. I don't look at someone and say, gee, she's smart for a woman, which is what's great about a lot of online video games. It's ironic that you constantly call video games sexist, yet when you're playing game with people, you don't even know their gender, their race, their ethnicity, etc. Sure. Some of that may be out there when you have to use a mic, but in my experience, people do not care about anything except how well can you play. But remember that even though we as individuals didn't create the system of patriarchy, it does manifest itself in almost every aspect of our lives, which means we do have a responsibility to challenge it. We must always recall our potential for positive impact in the world and be involved in this work not out of personal guilt or shame, but because, as we've discussed in this video, the desired outcome is ending gender-based oppression and making the world a better place for people of all genders, including men.
You know, I would buy that if people in your movement didn't act like women are the only ones treated unfairly. They're the only ones who have been oppressed. They're the only ones who have had to suffer. If this was 100 years ago, then yeah, I'd probably be on your side. But today, when women are treated as goddesses who are infallible and every issue that doesn't relate to women is ignored in importance, that I don't see the relevancy of feminism. These actions you were telling everyone to take is in no way better for men. What you were doing is telling us to feel women's opinions are more valued than our own. So essentially what you're saying men should do is listen to what women say, don't question them, force other men to blindly follow, women are always right, and recognize you will be wrong. How the fuck does that in any way help men? I mean, I know Anita Sarkeesian, the producer of this, has a slogan, listen and believe, but... How can you come on here and tell me that it's to benefit men? It's not. It's just to benefit women and so they can get whatever the fuck they want. The problem here is that you're starting off with the assumption that everyone and everything is sexist. If you don't believe me, here's some of Anita's own words. Everything is sexist. Everything is racist. Everything is homophobic. And you have to point it all out <laughs> to everyone all the time. So there's a good year of my life. <laughs> There's a good year of my life where it was just I was the most obnoxious person to be around. You know, Anita, it's been a really long fucking year then. You see, when you start off with your conclusion, you can make anything fit what you want. In college, I took a class where I had to do a 15-minute presentation on the JFK assassination. I started off with a ridiculous premise of aliens killed JFK, and I was able to fabricate a story that fit all the facts to the idea I wanted to get across. So when you start off with the idea that everything is sexist, then yeah, you can look at the facts and point out that is sexist against women. But if you watch my other video, Anita Sarkeesian, the early years, Retro Sexism, you saw how I pointed out how everything she said about commercials being sexist can easily be applied to men in the other commercials. Basically, people will see what they want to see. And you want to see sexism everywhere because it fits your narrative that women are repressed. This is the booze and bullshit show. Shit happens. And we make fun of it. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. If there's any bullshit that I missed, let me know in the comments. I like to hear what you guys have to say.